Hey everybody, um, doing question 15 uh, for this helper video. Multimedia storytelling and Twitter using examples from this presentation and your own research. Explain whether you think Twitter is a mostly positive or mostly negative force in the world. Don't say, oh, it's, it's half and half. Take a stand and tell me whether you think it's mostly positive or mostly negative. We know that there are both positive and negative aspects about it. I wanna hear you take a stand one way or the other and say it's mostly positive or mostly negative. Okay, so let's take a look at the PowerPoint that goes with it, uh, Google Slideshow. And let's get into a little bit of the history of Twitter. <clears throat> so um, Twitter has a lot of promise. It has a lot of um, uh, advantages. There are things that um, Twitter has, um, ways that Twitter has has uh, been a positive force in the world. Um, before the coronavirus pandemic, the last big financial crash we had was the Great Recession that happened uh, around 2008-2009. And the stock market uh, crashed, the economy was in shock. Um, People were losing their houses. Now, this is going to be nothing compared to um, what we're already seeing with um, the coronavirus um, pandemic. But anyway, this was our last big financial crash. After that happened, in 2011, um, protests broke out uh, called Occupy Wall Street. And people were protesting a lot of things, wealth inequality, political corruption, uh, things like that. And um, <clears throat> where did people decide that they wanted to protest? And this happened in every major city in the United States. Uh, it started in New York City, but it happened in every major city. And people camped out and they protested for months. A lot of people slept, you know, in tents that they set up uh, for, pro for in order to protest. It came from a hashtag. It came from uh, um, a, a group that was kind of uh, an anti-advertising group. Um, started it and it and they just started a, a tweet and it said hashtag Occupy Wall Street and it set off a huge um, protest movement. Now I think a lot of the attention that we have today towards inequality and I think it's gonna we're gonna have even more attention on inequality as we navigate the coronavirus um, pandemic and financial crisis. But um, I think this was a way to bring attention to inequality in a very strong way and people were paying much closer attention to it thanks to the Occupy Wall Street movement. So I think this is a, an example of a positive thing that Twitter um, accomplished. Another thing that Twitter um, accomplished and the, the record on this is mixed. Was it a positive thing? Was it a negative thing? Um, we the, the response on this is mixed. Some people think it was positive, some people think it wasn't. But um, the movement was called the Arab Spring. And again, it started from a Twitter hashtag. And um, it was it started in 2010. And it spread all across the Arab world. It included both um, violent and nonviolent demonstrations. Um, they were protesting for uh, better government uh, throughout the Arab world. And here are some things that happened as a result of the Arab Spring. Once again, because of that Hashtag Arab Spring. Um, and because of just communicating with each other over Twitter, um, people thronged the, the, the city squares all across the, the cities of the Arab world. In Tunisia, the president was ousted, charged, exiled, and the government was overthrown. In Egypt, President Hosni Mubarak ousted, arrested, charged, government overthrown. Libya, um, Gaddafi was, was killed following a civil war that saw a military intervention and a government overthrow. In Yemen, uh, the president was ousted and the power was handed to a national unity government. Now, some of the um, governments that replaced these governments were just as bad or even worse. So that's why the, the record is mixed. But once again, these people came together and were able to communicate with each other and decide where to meet, all because of Twitter. So here's an example of um, Egypt's um, um, in, in Cairo, this was a, a, a square in, in Cairo, Egypt, where hundreds of thousands of um, Arab Spring protesters were able to congregate. 
All right, another movement that Twitter has helped, uh, this movement would have happened anyway, but, um, but it was helped along by Twitter. Uh, it's the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, black Americans uh, experience more uh, inequality. Uh, they are arrested at higher rates than white people. They are, are profiled more. They, they experience more police brutality, and they are killed more often by police than, than um, white people. So um, Black Lives Matter um, became a hashtag, and um, people were able to draw a lot of attention to um, uh, the racism that um, black people have to uh, endure uh, in this country, uh, and Twitter helped put a spotlight on that. So I think that was another protest, uh, another kind of positive social force in the world that um, Twitter helped make possible. Me Too is another major uh, positive force in the world that was unleashed, this movement was unleashed thanks in part to Twitter. Because um, it wasn't until this movement that all these women all across the country and all across the world could make their voices heard about um, sexual harassment and sexual assault and rape. Um, often people, you know, women victims were afraid to talk about this, but um, when they could join their voices together under a single hashtag, Me Too, they could talk, share their experiences and people might find, oh, there's someone in living in New York who is sexually assaulted by the exact same guy. And I live here in California and I live in Los Angeles and they live in New York City and we never would have known this, but we both um, put hashtag me too. It turns out we were sexually harassed or sexually assaulted by the same guy, or let's say a movie producer or something like that. Um, okay, so that those are some examples of how Twitter has been a positive force in the world. But Twitter also has major negative um, aspects to it. So let's look at some examples of that. Um, just as Twitter can help women draw attention to the problem of sexual harassment, um, Twitter is also used to target women and to harass women. So women have at times boycotted Twitter to protest harassment and abuse on Twitter. Harassment on Twitter is so rampant that it has become a primary destination for trolls and hate groups. So much so that Twitter's own CEO declared, quote, we suck at dealing with abuse and trolls on the platform and we've sucked at it for years. One example, um, of someone who was um, harassed on Twitter um, is Leslie Jones, a racist and sexist hate mob forced Leslie Jones off of Twitter. Here was one example of a, a hate tweet aimed at, at uh, Leslie Jones and it was just an example of, of one, one of you know thousands of, of hate tweets against her that made her leave Twitter. She eventually came back. Um, racists and even white supremacists have used Twitter to organize and to uh, draw attention to their cause. And sometimes Twitter would even give them a blue verified uh, check mark. So Twitter was so, all they care, cared about in terms of giving someone a verified check mark was how many followers you had. They didn't care whether you were a white supremacist or, or, or a racist. So, so Twitter had to figure all this out. Um, one example would be white nationalist Richard Spencer and Charlottesville white supremacist rally organizer Jason Kessler were among the Twitter accounts that had lost their verified status um, as a social media company Twitter had to change who was entitled to that blue verified check mark. Okay. Here are some examples of people who got themselves in hot water by saying something on Twitter. Um, younger people are probably way better than older people at knowing what not to say on Twitter, but still it's important to show the danger and the hot water you can get yourself into by saying stupid things on Twitter. One thing you can look at if you do choose to do this um, 
as your final exam, as one of your final exam questions. Uh, along with whether Twitter is mostly a positive or negative force in the world, you can also get into should these people who I'm getting ready to talk about have been fired for their tweets? If so, why? And if not, why not? At what point should a tweet become a fireable offense? All right. This person only had a few followers when she got on a plane um, and she... Uh, was on her way to uh, South Africa. She, uh, this person is named Justine Sacco, and she is, um, at the time, she was the head of PR for the umbrella company that owned all these smaller companies like Tinder and um, Vimeo. So she had this kind of um, sarcastic personality that she would show off on Twitter. For example, Weird German dude, you're in first class. It's 2014. Get some deodorant in her monologue as I inhale body odor. Thank God for pharmaceuticals. This is as she's getting ready to get on a, a plane to South Africa. So we could tell she's sarcastic and she likes to make um, jokes. Um, and here's another one. Uh, chili cucumber sandwiches, bad teeth back in London. So this was her London layover on the way to South Africa. At this point, she only had 170 Twitter followers, so not very many. By the time she landed in South Africa, she started being inundated by text messages from people she knew back in the States. Text messages that said things like, I'm so sorry to see what's happening, and you need to call me immediately. And you're the number one worldwide trend on Twitter right now. What had happened? This. She tweeted this, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Now, she may have been making fun of this racist belief by pretending like she believed it, but Twitter is not great with nuance, and so people basically took this as a, as a very racist uh, tweet. And... So she becomes, while she is in midair on the plane from London to um, South Africa, she becomes the number one worldwide trend on Twitter. And here's what one person says on Twitter. I don't think America has watched a landing this closely since Apollo 13 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in 1970. Hashtag, has Justine landed yet? Um, here's a tweet after she realizes what's happening and she's being bombarded. Um, with threats and all other kinds of things. She says, my family is done with me. I'm a, just alone in my hotel with nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm done. I'm shot. I'm finished. She says, I'm going insane with these horrible people threatening to rape my nephew or kill one of my family members. You are sick. Um, Justine Sacco went into hiding. She literally had to go into hiding for years because people could not... The hotel in South Africa couldn't even guarantee her safety. She, she had her family and her friends disowned her. She went to New York and she um, went into hiding for years. She always said she was going to get her life back. And people laughed at that. They're like, there's no way anyone would hire you after that. Well, um, by the way, she was interviewed in a book that you've got to read. The book is called So You've Been Publicly Shamed by um, John Ronson. It's, it's an amazing book, and they interview uh, Justine Sacco in this book. Believe it or not, she did come back and works in public relations again. She was at um, FanDuel for a while, and I think now, let me, let me double check and see where she is now. Let's see. Let's go to her. Let's see if she's still on Twitter. Oh, here we go. Down here. Oh, no, no. That's a, okay. Never mind. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if she's still at. Um, I'm going to do this. Where is Justine Sacco now? As of 2018. She 
She's running all corporate communications for Match Group, the online dating company that IAC spun off in 2015. So she's not at FanDuel anymore. She's at IAC. Well, um, back to back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation here. Um, but anyway, it, it was true. People did, you know, people do have a short attention span. And even though she had to go into hiding for a few years, she did come back. And as a matter of fact, she did get back into public relations. All right, here's an example of racism. Um, Terry Fry says, nothing specifically personal, but I'm very uncomfortable with the Japanese driver winning the Indy 500 during Memorial Day weekend. Uh, why would he say such a racist thing? Doesn't matter. There's no excuse for racism, no matter what your reason is. This person was a sports columnist for the Denver Post in Colorado, and he was fired after um, tweeting that about the um, Japanese winner of the Indy 500. It was something to do with World War II. Uh, point is, it doesn't matter if you're gonna say a Japanese person. You know, you you you. Uh, you there's no excuse for um, for racism, no matter what your your grudge is. Uh, Roseanne Barr found out how quickly things could go wrong when you um, say something racist on Twitter. Her show was canceled within hours of a racist comment she made. Um, there's an African-American woman who um, worked for the Obama administration named Valerie Jarrett. She was a senior advisor to Obama. And Roseanne Barr tweets uh, down here, uh, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ or Valerie Jarrett. Within hours, her show, um, which was a reboot of, a, of an earlier show from the 90s, uh, her show was canceled, even though it was doing like gangbusters, great ratings. It, it was uh, canceled immediately. Um, homophobia can get you kicked off um, and your life ruined very quickly as well. Here's a guy who, um, who found that out. He says, I completely and wholeheartedly support Todd Reynolds and his support for the traditional and true meaning of marriage. Um, what was he talking about? Well, he was basically saying it's wrong for um, two people of the same sex or same gender to get married. Only, you know, a heterosexual man and a heterosexual woman can ever get married. Well, he was fired uh, for that tweet. He was a broadcaster in Canada. Sexism um, can also get you in hot water. Here's a guy who actually makes a living partly for being sexist. He's part of a right-wing uh, website that people who kind of enjoy seeing sexist um, content, they, they look to him. His name is Matt Walsh. She, uh, uh, he takes this photo of a guy carrying a, a woman and child um, to safety from a boat during a flood. He writes, woman cradles and protects child. Man carries and protects both. This is how it ought to be, despite what your gender studies professor says. Well, um, so what he's saying is only the man, you know, the men are the are the only true heroes. They're the, supposed to be the strong ones. They're supposed to be the ones who pick up and carry the woman and the child. Uh, women and children are supposed to be helpless, and men are supposed to be big and strong. So um, Twitter had a lot of fun with this. Uh, Gideon Resnick uh, put, posted this and said, it's a picture of a cat riding on top of a dog. This is how it ought to be, despite what your gender studies professor says. Uh, here's a raccoon holding a cat. This is how it ought to be, despite what your raccoon studies professor says. So these people are just making fun of Matt Walsh for his outdated view of, of um, uh, men and women's roles in society. This is my favorite. Chili with beans cradles warm cheese. Fritos supports both. This is how it ought to be, despite what your gender studies professor says. Did Matt Walsh get fired? No, he works for a place called The Blaze. They love this stuff. So he actually, even though it is wrong to be sexist, uh, this guy makes money off of it. And um, you'll notice down at the bottom there, Christian columnist and political incendiary Matt Walsh is an extremist, if truth is extreme. So 
he enjoys um, the heat that he takes from being sexist. If you uh, advocate violence, um, you can, even if you are joking, you can lose your job. Houston Rockets, Twitter account. Dallas Mavericks uh, mascot with a gun to its head. Shh, just close your eyes. It will all be over soon. The Rockets Twitter account sent out a tweet Tuesday night as the team played game five against the Mavericks, which showed a gun to a horse's head and emoji along with, Shh, just close your eyes. It will all be over soon. Houston was in the process of eliminating Dallas. The tweet was deleted shortly after, and Chad Shanks, the digital communications manager behind the tweet, was apparently fired. Yes, he was. Um, he wrote, Sometimes you can go too far. I will no longer run Houston Rockets Twitter account, but I'm grateful to the organization that let me develop an online voice. He said, I did my best to make the account the very best in the NBA by pushing the envelope, but I pushed too far for some, and for that I apologize. Should he have lost his job for this, or, or are you one of the people who's like, oh, come on, it's a joke. But some people thought this was too violent. Um, so I have some other... Um, examples here of people getting themselves in trouble for advocating for things that um, were very controversial. This, uh, this comedian made fun of um, an earthquake that caused a tsunami that hit Japan and more than... Um, the combined total of confirmed deaths and missing people was more than 22,000. So a tsunami kills 22,000 people and, and this comedian made fun of it. And, um, oh, by the way, this one is from UT. Hurricane Harvey hit uh, the Gulf Coast in 2017. It really hit Houston especially hard. And it killed 77 people and inflicted $200 billion in damage. Well, a UT professor had this to say on Twitter. I don't believe in instant karma, but this kind of feels like it for Texas. Hopefully this will help them realize the GOP doesn't care about them. So what he was saying was that Texas deserved the 77 deaths and the $200 billion in damage because they voted for the GOP or they voted Trump, they voted Republican. He lost his job um, very quickly from the University of Tampa. He wasn't full-time here. He also taught at um, Rollins College in Orlando, uh, and they did not fire him, but UT fired him very quickly. You can also um, get in trouble for criticizing your employer. Uh, this person criticized her employer, and they found out. They were reading her Twitter feed, and uh, they said, who is your hiring manager? I'm sure they would like to know you will hate the work. We here at Cisco are versed in the web. Uh, the last thing I, I just added, it's incitement of imminent lawless action. The First Amendment allows a lot of things, a uh, surprising amount of, of, of things. But one thing it, it, the First Amendment does not allow is incitement of imminent lawless action. If you encourage people to break the law and you do it in such a way that um, a court would agree that, yes, this is very likely to result in lawless action, then that's considered incitement and that's not protected by the First Amendment. Well, a lot of people believe that Donald Trump actually has committed incitement here. He said, liberate Virginia on, on Twitter, liberate Michigan and liberate Minnesota. What he was doing was encouraging these um, anti-lockdown protests. A lot of people, like this writer for the Washington Post, said Trump's Liberate Michigan tweets incite insurrection, and that's illegal. Federal laws ban advocating the overthrow of government. Well, federal law, uh, the First Amendment does, um, uh, the, the, the First Amendment, the, the, the Supreme Court says you there are some exceptions to, to freedom of speech, and one exception is uh, incitement of imminent lawless action. But a lot of people are, there are enough people who believe that this does not incite um, imminent lawless action. So I do not think anything is going to happen to Trump in terms of getting in trouble for incitement. But it's amazing to watch, uh, and several of you sent me these photos, um, the, the protesters and the medical healthcare 
professionals who are standing up to these protesters. So the protesters are saying, hey, let me out of this lockdown. And the, and the medical professionals are saying, hey, we're, we're just trying to keep you and everyone else safe. Uh, so um, that is the PowerPoint for this particular question. And let me know if you have any questions.